Football clubs are often referred to as the lifeblood of communities, and nowhere is this more true than the city of Manchester. Whether you're a blue, or you're a red, or you fall somewhere in between, everybody in this city looks towards the football club for their hope, their inspiration, and to be the highlight of their week. When the coronavirus pandemic hit, football clubs and fans mobilised by opening food banks to help feed their community. So in this dock, I'll be visiting FC United to see their food hub in action. I'll be visiting Manchester City to see how they are helping fans and food banks alike. And then I'll be visiting Manchester United to see how the red side of Manchester is helping their community. Here at FC United, during the coronavirus lockdown, the club, instead of turning inwards, looked outwards to its local community for ways that it could help. They started by organising and opening a food bank through the community hub. It has helped hundreds of people to be able to afford things like sanitary products, fresh fruit and vegetables, things that they may not be able to get in their daily life or on the budget that they operate on. So in terms of their community, FC United are a club for the many, not for the few. FC are a community football club that play their football in the seventh tier of English football. They were formed in 2005 in the fallout of the Glazers' takeover of Manchester United. They are run by the supporters, for the supporters. This is reflected in their community hub, where community liaison officer Vinnie Thompson told us all about the food bank that they operate. So this is um, a food hub, so it isn't just about food, it's about working with people's mental states, working with people who've been in isolation, uh, lots of different things. Um, and people who've recovered from isolation, they've been in, you know, cooped up for two years for various reasons with COVID, and pulling them out of that and getting, you know, finding them something. Uh, so all this wonderful food goes out to not just um, families that deliver to, but um, form this like coalition of kindness where I work with about eight, nine groups, some every week, um, most every week and some every two, three weeks when they need something. And we work together um, to just form a, a coalition of, of goodness really, working with, with whoever needs it. I've engineered a lot of network of, of beautiful people who want to help. So, and, and this it's not just about food poverty, it's about reducing food waste. So, but we, as you can see, there's nothing here yellow labeled end of the day stock. The stuff you, you don't see off the camera here, it's like 2023. Um, so it's, it's about finding a home for that and making sure that it gets used. Over in Stretford, Manchester United fans are helping food banks such as Centrepoint in the city centre by bringing donations on a match day. This has been orchestrated by the MUFC Foundation and has been helped out by the club itself, especially at the height of the COVID pandemic. United in the community run fundraisers on match days out of a little house down there on Matt Busby Way. For tomorrow's match against Leicester, they're expecting at least 50 kilos of food to be donated from both United fans and also Leicester City's fan group, Foxes in the Community. And it's out of this very building where fans have been feeding families in their local area by donating food, tins, fresh food and clothes. The difference these fans are making is being felt all the way from the pitch to the parish, as I found out when I visited Bishop's Court. I'm here at Bishop's Court in Salford to speak with Lord Bishop of Manchester, David Walker, about the food banks in his local area, how his diocese has responded, and how him as a member of the House of Lords is helping with the ongoing food crisis. I will think about when you're working with a local community is, is that um, it's often all people of good faith mm. working together. So a particular institution within that community, which might be a church or it might be a football club or it might be uh, of other voluntary organisation, uh, or a mosque or a synagogue, 
will kind of take a lead role and convene and then the rest of, uh, kind of pile in and, 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 and help out. And I, th I think a true measure of our, of our community spirit is that we don't have to lead everything or everything has to be branded in the name of my organisation. Yeah. Uh, that we're willing to, to lend a hand whether a particular food bank is run by uh, as I said, you know, a voluntary society, a, a sports organisation, a, a, a different faith community whatever it may be, it's still the same work, it's still the same challenge, and we're, and we're better together. You're in the House of Lords, that's correct. So do you confer with the other bishops and other lords, and what, what that, what's that conversation like in terms of a response? I think along with a number of my colleagues, uh, bishops, particularly those who are members of the House of Lords, that we try to keep an eye on. Uh, changes that are taking place in legislation. Uh, we try to speak out if we feel that particular proposals are going to be uh, damaging to the well-being of the poorest, the most vulnerable in our communities. Uh, clearly we don't win everything, sometimes we gain some kind of modest concession, but uh, ultimately if a government has got a, a manifesto that says it's going to do this or do that, uh, then it has the right to deliver that manifesto through the parliamentary system. But we do seek to meet both uh, privately with ministers and to speak out publicly in debates in uh, in Parliament in order to make it clear that if governments do act in ways that pile yet more burdens on the poorest, they do so knowing that uh, that is what they're doing and that we're watching them while they do it. You might have noticed that this documentary has been very red-centric up to now, but we've not forgotten about City. Here on the blue side of Manchester, they're doing things slightly differently. By collecting food on a match day and giving it out to their local community, they're really hitting who need it the most. It's called MCFC Fans for Food Banks, and I spoke to Alex from the organisation to see how the coronavirus pandemic has affected their day-to-day -day work, how they started, and just what they're doing now for this community. We set up a couple of hours before kickoff, uh, you know, spread the word the week before, and City Fans will bring donations uh, of food or money. Um, we collect them and then they all go to Manchester Central Food Bank uh, after the game. They come and pick it up and then it gets distributed around Manchester everywhere from Rochon to Moston and the whole way around. Football fans are the biggest organised group in every town and city across the country. Uh, if we get together we can do whatever we want pretty much. Whether that's leading the boycott of pay-per-view football during the pandemic or supplying PPE or anything else, we, we do all sorts. Um, if football fans work together, you know, the potential is pretty strong um, and that's most evident in the Right to Food campaign, which we're running as part of Fans Supporting Food Banks. Um, and the aim there is quite simply to eradicate poverty entirely. Uh, um, we started on New Year's Day 2020, um, just before Christmas myself and a few, a few friends uh, following the 2019 election decided to get started so we got everything together over Christmas um, and then just set up and got going um, collecting food and money on behalf of Manchester Central Food Bank. Well, the day that we persuaded City to pay the staff during the pandemic was good. Um, the day that the RMT got in touch with us to make a big donation to help us support us and improve what we were doing and stuff like that. That was a really good day. Every collection's had its, had its high points, you know. We, we get people coming back and talking to us all the time and, and it's really nice to get to know people before a game.